Hi everyone, today we're going to think about the second of our four discipleship priorities that we started looking at last year, and that is the four uh, that we love, grow, serve and go. Today we're going to look at growing, uh, growing specifically more like Christ, but before we come to God's word, let's pray. Lord God in heaven above, we praise you and thank you that it is your hand that upholds us, your hand that strengthens us. Indeed, Lord God, we praise you that it is you who helps us to understand your word. So we pray now, help us as we look into your word to understand what it has to teach us. And we pray that ultimately great glory might be brought to Christ uh, through this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to read from Colossians chapter 1 from verse 9 through to verse 14. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. As Christians, we are to love, love God and love our neighbour, and we are to grow in our likeness to Christ. Christians ought to become more and more like Jesus every day of their lives. Now, for sure, in the process of what we call sanctification, that is growing more like Jesus, there are ups and downs. And we praise our God that even when we mess up, even when we're on those downs, God is able to forgive us in Jesus Christ. We need to be uh, daily repenting as our process of growing more like Christ. Of course, Christ had no need to repent, but it is important that we're in daily communion uh, with God. And that communion is broken when we have unrepented sin. So let's be those who uh, confess our sins to God daily. Let's keep short accounts with God. But the reason I've read from Colossians chapter 1 is because in a lecture that I've had this week, uh, I've had it pointed out to me that within these verses, as Paul is praying for the Colossian believers that they might live lives worthy of worthy of the Lord Jesus, live lives that are very Christ-like, he gives a kind of, in four strokes, uh, four different pictures of what it means to be a Christian. Uh, let's have a look at them together, the first of which we find in verse 10. Let me read from the start of the verse so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, in the first one, bearing fruit in every good work. You see, this first thing that Paul refers to is external. Those things that can be seen by others, bearing fruit. We think of the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, graciousness, gentleness, and self-control. And we'll be looking at those in the coming weeks in some video devotions. But we want to be those who, as we grow in likeness to Christ, well, if we grow in likeness to Christ, we will increasingly display fruit. Of course, we know from the gospel, according to John, that apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. We cannot bear fruit without him. The vine, he is the vine. We are the branches. We cannot bear fruit without him. So we must be close with Christ and dependent upon him to bear fruit. But that's the first of the four things that Paul draws our attention to. Secondly, in the second half of verse 10, growing in the knowledge of God. Where bearing fruit was an external thing, this is an internal thing. We need to grow in knowledge, in knowledge of God. Well, how can we do this? We're in a privileged age where we can access all kinds of resources, so many wonderful books, uh, sermons, podcasts that we can access. And might I commend to you, especially today, uh, a series of sermons by Matt Chandler from uh, the, the letter written by James. You can find that by simply Googling Matt Chandler James sermons and you'll be able to find the first part and that will carry you through. 
I personally have found those sermons to be of great benefit in growing in my knowledge of God and what he desires for me, especially in the context of suffering. So I commend that to you. So you see then, bearing fruit external, partnered with uh, growing in knowledge of God, internal. The next of the four things, the third one, we see in verse 11. Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. You see, this third thing is about being spiritually tough, being able to endure, being patient in difficult times. And well, we are in difficult times at the moment, not the kind of difficult times that some people around the world always experience in extreme persecution. But these are indeed difficult times. Where do we get that strength from? Well, it's power according to his glorious might. Just as Jesus prayed to the father and was dependent upon upon him, we too need to be dependent upon God and his power that we might be spiritually tough. And then the fourth thing is in verse four, sorry, in verse 12, which reads like this, and giving joyful thanks to the father. You see where the third thing was about being spiritually tough. The fourth thing is about being spiritually sweet, giving joyful thanks to the father, being people who are full of praise for God. How can we do this? Well, in living lives worthy of him, that brings praise to our father. Of course, we can do this by singing hymns, by reading good hymns, reading good books, by exploring these things and learning more about God. We will be given more and more reasons to praise God. Now, I know a lot of my application here today has been about prayer, and that's because prayer is vitally important. We need to be praying that we would bear fruit, that we would stay in the vine. We need to be praying for strength from God to bear with the tough times and we need to be praying our praise to God for all that he's done for us we also ought to pray as we did at the start of this devotion for God to help us to learn to grow in knowledge of him so let me urge you on in prayer and in those other ways that I've mentioned before and let's turn to prayer now shall we gracious God and loving heavenly father we adore you and praise you for the wonder of your word Thank you for those men that you inspired by the Holy Spirit uh, to write down these words, these infallible words that come from you, your message for us. Thank you for what Paul is able to speak of here as uh, true Christianity, growth in Christianity. And we do pray, Lord God, you would help us to be those who bear fruit. Lord God, in times when it's easy to be impatient, we, pair, we pray that we would bear that spiritual fruit of patience. Lord God, help us to be people of, of love. Help us to be people of joy when much of the world around us is empty of that, that joy. Lord, we pray you'd help us to grow in the knowledge of you. Thank you for the wonderful resources that you've blessed us with. And we pray, Lord God, that in these days we would make best use of them. Help us to make good use of the time that you've given us. Lord, we pray as well that you would give us the strength that we need to bear with these present trials. We do pray for our brothers and sisters among our our, our congregation among our number who are struggling at this time or suffering at this time we pray again for those who have lost loved ones in recent days we pray for those who are facing uh, medical scares and worries we pray for those who are facing financial issues or job insecurity lord god we would ask that by your holy spirit you would help us all to be strong help us not to give in to fear but to always live as those who know we have a sure and certain hope in Christ Jesus. And last of all, Lord God, we pray you'd help us to be those who are full of praise for you. Lord God, we've got so much to praise you for. In heaven, we'll see more and more of your goodness and we'll have more and more reasons to praise you. For eternity, we will praise you. There will, we will never run out of things to praise you for. And that is remarkable. And for that, Lord God, for your eternal, uh, wonderfully complex and beautiful, glorious nature, we do praise you. And Lord God, we ask that you'd help us to be those who grow in likeness to Christ. Lord, for those of us who are struggling at this time, who feel like we might be on one of those downward trends in the process of sanctification, we pray turn us around. Lord, we pray for your forgiveness. 
We confess our sins to you and we ask, Lord God, keep us confessing our sins in Jesus' name. Lord, that we might grow in likeness to Christ. For those of us who are doing well in this, I pray, Lord God, that you would sustain us. Help us to remember that apart from Christ, we can do nothing. Uh, apart from you, we will not continue to grow. So we pray, Lord God, for those of us who are doing well, Lord, we ask for your grace to continue in this way. Lord God, we lift you these, our prayers, in Jesus' name. Amen.